I'm on in. Climb on in. Let me know if y'all in the building tonight. Uh, I, I know y'all see what's on this title today. Uh, we finna talk about these three fools that can truly, truly change your entire life around. These three fools that can, that can truly heal your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. These three fools that can truly, truly bring you into a, a, a healing state of homeostasis, stasis to regenerate your your your, your t uh, cells and your tissues. Y'all climb on in. Y'all climb on in. Peace, peace. Let's settle this for once and for all, family. We got a lot of people saying, well, it's the meat. Well, it's the fruits. Well, it's the vegetables. Well, it's this. Well, it's that. You need this to heal. You need fats to heal. You need protein to heal. You need amino acids to heal. You need this. You need that. You know, uh, we have so many clinical trials and healing testimonies to put this to bed, and which is what we've been doing. But it seemed like every now and then I just got to revamp and show y'all the things that I've been showing y'all time and time and time and time again to truly show show you what detoxification does to the body to truly show you what these three foods that i'm going to talk about really do to the body to show you what herb, herbal therapy does to the body and just how meat reacts to the body differently from how fruits react to the body differently than how vegetables react to the body we have to understand that we uh it's called the cosmic arrangement you know we were made a certain way and we was designed and made for certain fruit foods just like every other race of people was designed and made differently so they food will be differently just like if you look into the animal kingdom and you look at birds for instance you look out into the animal kingdom you see a parakeet a parakeet eats nothing but fruit but then and that's a bird then you see a vulture a vulture eat nothing but roll kill and dead meat literally but that's still a bird and then you have a hummingbird which eats nothing but but uh nectar or what you will call syrup but it's still a bird and then if you look all of these different birds or or born or created cosmic arrangement genetic disposition they're created in according to their geographical location you know one is from africa the other one is from up north and the other one is from out west but all of them are birds all of them have different diets all of their genetic structures is differently you know but they are still part of a bird family a foul family same thing when you get to the felines you have something called the the mountain lion or what they call the puma or the cougar it's still a lion it's called a mountain lion but then you have the africa sahari uh lion which is a a main lion one grows a mane and a beard the other one don't one loves fish you know the the mountain lo lion loves fish the other one don't it loves gazelles it loves zebras it loves hyenas it loves things like that one roar the other one purr. One climb trees real good. The other one can't climb at all. Even their mouths and their, their teeth structure is different, but they're still felines and they're still cats, but they are created in, in according to their geographical location. They, they depend on food more than another. You can't take that same mountain lion that loves to be in the snow and put it in the middle of the desert in Africa. It would die because even though that they're both lions and they're both felines and they're both cats, they they're made genetically differently. Their chemical makeup, the molecules that make up their physiology is different. So their food is different. Their climbing is different. Things that they adhere to is different. The, even the way that they huddle and mate. If you look at a mountain lion, it is it is it is, is it in solitude all the time. It don't like to be around nobody else. But if you look at a main lion as in Africa, it has to be with its pride. So even their behavior is different. And why is their behavior different? Because their diets is different. And why is their diets different? Because their genetic makeup is different, even though that it's still part of the feline cat family. Do we need to go to polar bears and grizzly bears? Do we do we need to talk about that? Do we need to talk about if you take a polar bear and and, and, and put it out here in, in this type of atmosphere that it would die because it's not cold enough? And if you take that same polar bear that's out here, I mean, that same grizzly bear and put it where the polar bear stay, it would die and it would freeze to death because of the fur is different. The fat and, and, and the potassium monophosphate ratio is different. 
So we 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 can't keep playing these games like we can just eat whatever we want to eat. We can't keep playing these games like we can just eat whatever everybody else eat. You eat according to your cosmic arrangement. You eat according to how you was created. You eat according to your geographical location of your ancestry. You know, and a lot of people want to argue with me. A lot of people want to say I'm crazy. A lot of people want to say I'm lying. A lot of people want to say I'm not studied up. Who are you? You don't have any PhDs and doctrines degrees, but yet and still out of out of the only few healers that are truly healing people in this earth today, I am counted amongst them. So obviously, if I say something, it's not just happenstance or if I'm saying something, it's not speaking out the side of my neck or speaking from my butt. I'm speaking from experience. Geographical location means something. Cosmic arrangement means something. Genetic disposition means something. You don't eat by bloodline. You don't eat by calories and people counting their calories and all this crazy nonsense. You eat according to the landmass where you or your ancestor was created from. From. And we're going to show you this. And if you really, really get into the physiology and the anatomy of the body, it is clear what we supposed to be eating. You know, we don't have to sit back and guess. You don't got to meditate and twiddle your thumbs to actually come to the conclusion of what type of livid, not diet, but livid we're supposed to be on. Instead of being on this livid, we have adapted a diet. And that's the reason why we're dying, because we're eating foods that animals eat. We're eating foods that carnivores eat. We're eating foods that omnivores eat we eat in foods that herbivore eats and we're not none of them once we go through all of this different information it's going to show you who you truly are physiology wise when it comes to your brain capability brain capacity when it comes to your your cosmic energy your spirituality the way you think how your frontal lobe is developed more than everybody's but a dolphin i mean when you get down to everything that makes up a human being you will see that the food that you need to eat to keep the energy inside of your body and to actually keep your spirituality intact with oneself so if y'all ready to get everything started y'all type in some nines we're gonna dive deep into this y'all we're gonna dive deep into this we're gonna dive deep into this and you know what's crazy like if if you look at these things they don't even look the difference right they, they don't they don't look like it's a different you know right on the left on, on on the left you have a cougar on the right you actually have a lion and they're both called lions. One is called a mountain lion and one is called an African lion. These are both lions, but their diets, their diet is different, even though they're both carnivores. See, I'm not a liar either. I'm not a liar. They're both carnivores, but their diets is different. Not only is their diets is different, their genetic makeup is different. If you check their blood, if you check their DNA and their genealogy, it is different. One cannot survive in the winter and the other one cannot survive in the heat. You see that? One loves to be with a pride. One loves to be with uh, uh, socialism and socialize. The other one has to be by itself. One literally roars. The other one purrs. One climb trees and hunt. The other one stay low. One uses his might and his force and his strength to tackle his prey. The other one uses his speed. These are the same family. They're called lions. Same family, y'all. They're both Leos, but they do two totally different things. And they're, they come from two different parts of the world. And according to where they come from on this geographical map, According to their geographical location, it depends on the true diet they have, they, 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 they sociology, the way they think, their behavior and everything else. I mean, this stuff is mind blowing. So we can we can look out into the animal kingdom and we can look out into nature. Right. And, and you can see this stuff and you can see it and you can say that's true. That's a fact. You know, you can look at a bird, a parakeet and see it eats nothing but 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 fruits and seeds every now and then. If you domesticate it, a tunica eats nothing uh, uh, but fruits. But then you see a vulture and an eagle and an owl and a hawk. They eat nothing but meat, nothing but meat. Then you look at a hummingbird and a, and, a, and a cousin of a hummingbird and you see that eats nothing but sweet nectar, honey, sap and stuff like that. So all of these are part of a bird family. But depending on the type of bird. Just like all of us is a part of the humanity or the human race, but depends on the type of race. Guess what's different? The diet, the diet or what we're going to call the livid, because when you eat in what you was created to eat, it's a livid. But when you eat what you was not designed to eat is a diet because you would die from it because what you eat then eats you and it eats you alive because it's acidic to the body and you have a, a, a systemic blowback 
from it whenever you violate nature you have to pay for it family and that's what i keep teaching y'all whenever you violate nature you have to pay for it so when you look out in nature and you see these things why don't you never just sit back and say dang if this is so prominent and these facts are true when it comes to other mammals why is this same thing not applied when it comes to this mammal called a human why is these same things or these same principles and the same fundamental structures it don't apply to us but it applies to everything in nature aren't we a part of nature and, and this is just some thought provoking things to start making y'all think, because I see that a lot of my people is stuck in their sense and their senses. A lot of our people are stuck in a taste buzz. A lot of our people are being controlled by parasites, parasitics, you know, low thought form frequencies. And they're not they're not raising their frequency or activating them chakra, that chakra, that especially that third eye and that throat chakra for they able to express themselves articulately and think, you know, non biasly and not think from their root chakra, they sacral chakra they solar plex and just be all about the gut all about the belly all about busting the nut all about doing all these reptilian minded or reptilian memoristic brain things and not thinking like the god and the goddesses that you truly is because once you really start thinking uh, about how once you start thinking how you were made to think you will say you know what y'all key that actually makes sense let me put aside my ego you know let me put aside all this bull crap in his jargon that i didn't learn from the oppressor and let me actually go into nature and just look at this stuff in a simplistic way and you will come to the same conclusion that me and many others been been came through for many a, uh came to for many a years now now check this out y'all because it, it it gets deep man it gets deep it gets deep now i didn't show people a lot of this stuff a lot of times but you know with our people you got to keep showing and keep showing and keep showing all right, I'm talking about three foods. It is three foods on planted earth that that if you eat them and you make this a part of your daily diet, you can heal any disease inside of your body. You can heal anything. I don't care what it is, a so-called virus, which there's no such thing as viruses. Uh, I put something up on my Instagram where I wanted to show y'all, but uh, I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to show that on the live on my website. I'm not going to do it on my Instagram or on my platforms because I know they're going to shut me down because it's that powerful. I mean, it's, it's that information is powerful, mind-blowing stuff. And I'm, I'm talking about straight up proving that viruses don't exist i can prove it i've been saying it i've been showing y'all little pictures and fragments but now i got the whole presentation done i mean and it's mind-blowing you know but if you want to get rid of that so-called illusion we call viruses this ease all these other different type of thing osis itises all you have to do is stick to what you was created to eat and it will reverse everything in your body and it will resurrect the cells and cause cellular regeneration you can grow back thyroids you can grow back limbs you can grow back anything that t you can grow back any all these things that you got your permanent teeth your permanent teeth fell out one 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 would not grow back if you stick to this diet yes it will things grow back gums actually regenerate themselves them receding gum limes come back the enamel grow back all these all these things grow back you just are eating your way into death you're eating your way into deterioration and you're not eating your way to life to living things things that's going to regenerate things that's going to rejuvenate things that's going to restore restore let me show y'all so if you actually start looking at these things right right now what we're looking at we're looking at one two three four we're looking at four different species right we're looking at carnivores omnivores herbivores frugivores and human now we're going to have to be simple y'all look let's not think too hard because healing is simplistic okay healing is very very simplistic we do not have to make this hard i'm not going to even use no big words or none of that i try to make this stuff so easily overstood and understood and understood it's crazy so let's just take our minds out of this let's take all the the complexity out of this and all of these different long jargon words and just look at this from a simplistic way and it will make sense to you okay now when we're looking at the physiology of a carnivore an omnivore an ovivore, and a frugivore we will have to ask ourselves which one closely do the human being assimilates all right now the first thing i want to show is the physiological the physiological food is meat when it comes to a, a carnivore when it comes to an omnivore is meat and vegetables when it comes to an herbivore is grains and its trees and its foliage and grass and stuff like that when it comes to a frugivore it is 
simply major fruits and it's a little bit of vegetables and it's nuts and seeds. All right. Now, according to this, this theory, we're going to call it a theory right now until we prove it. Okay. According to this theory, everything that's on a human will have to match one of these things for you to call this a carnivore. For instance, in order for a human to be a carnivore, it will have to walk on all fours. You see that it will have his mouth must open very, very large. It will have to not chew his, his meat, you know, because carnivores swallow their meat. They can, they don't have time to chew it. It will have to have long canines to actually rip into fur, rip into flesh. It will have to have claws. For it can claw the big animal down And rip the flesh straight from the bone to eat it It will have to have a Very very high amounts of acid Inside of his stomach sac Hydrochloric acid and pepsigen uh, Which is at a 1.2 For it can burn up that gnarly protein And up that gnarly meat It will have to eat its animals alive Not fully dead Because it needs the blood in it Okay, it'll also have to have elongated but very, very, very short intestine because that meat cannot stay in the body too long because it will kill the body. It will have to sleep at least 18 to 21 hours a day. If we're saying that we're carnivores, I, I, let me pull this off the screen real fast. If we're saying that we're carnivores, y'all, and we just and we eat meat, it's cool for us to eat meat. We have to say we shouldn't be eating nothing else. We shouldn't be eating vegetables. We shouldn't be eating fruits. We shouldn't be eating grains or nothing there because that's what carnivores eat. And then when you look at their mouth, they have long canines. We don't have those, meaning that you should be able to go to your prey and just bite a chunk out of it and you should have claws and talons long enough for you to rip the meat straight from the bone can you do that no you can't or and do you even have the short amount of intestinal and colon for you can pass that meat inside of your stomach sac is the acid so low that it can burn and break this meat down within 18 hours no it can't do you eat your meat alive do you eat your meat with the blood flowing and gushing from it for you can get all the phytonutrients that you need from the meat no you don't so we can say y'all we can say with confidence we can say with confidence that we are not carnivores. All right. Now, when you move into an omnivore, now let's look at the omnivores. Let's see if we're omnivores and then we're going to go slide by slide and break this stuff down because, you know, a lot of people is not just going to take this right here. And I know that because me, if I was a person that questioned everything, if I was an intuitive person and I wanted to know truth, I would I wouldn't take this simple slide right here. I wouldn't say Yaki is right. I need extensive research. So that's what we're going to do today. That's what we're going to do today. Now, when you go to omnivores, it says omnivores eat meat and vegetables. Your body is not designed to eat either. But this is just a theory. Let's just see. All right. You have to have four paws. Do you have paws or do you have clothes? No, you don't. You don't have claws. You see that your mouth will have to open very, very large because you have to break down bone. You have to digest all types of different calcium and all of that. The acid inside of your body have to be so hot that it bur it breaks down bones. It is able to break down teeth and everything because I mean, I didn't see, I can show y'all some videos of, of these omnivores and of these carnivores eating things that I know for a fact that you can't even pass through your digestive tract showing you that your physiology is different meaning that your food will be different your geographical location is different showing that your behavior and your food is different things that make up your whole entire body is different showing that your food is different all right y'all see that do y'all see that? And then when you look at the lateral sizes on there, look, the same lateral sizers and the same canines, which you do not have. The human is all the way over to the right. Do your teeth look like the first two? Your teeth don't look nothing like a carnivore. Your teeth look nothing like an omnivore. Your teeth don't even look nothing like an herbivore, but we're going to get to that. You see that? You see that? And then the renal secretion, if you even look at the renal or the kidney secretion in order to filtrate these things out of the body, the veins is the size of my thumb. Well, look, let me let me show you all something. When you look at the veins inside of these felines, these carnivores and these these uh, herbivores, I mean, uh, omnivores, their veins. 
their vascular system is the size of my thumb because they have to pass through all of them big proteins through their bloodstream because that's what they survive off of. They digestive tract go through something called putrefaction. Your digestive tract go through something called fermentation. You see that putrefaction is the rotting of flesh. You can't have putrefaction inside of your body because it starts gluing your cells together. It literally starts clunking your cells together and it creates all types of uh, carcinogens. And these are cancering mutating cells that creates tumors in your body because mucus start mixing with other modalities in the body and the body cannot regenerate or rehabilitate itself. So you, you sure can't do that. Let me turn my phone off real quick, y'all. So you, you sure can't do that. So the more and more we start going through these different animals and these different processes, it's going to show you what you're supposed to be eating, y'all. And I'm not making this stuff up. If this stuff is making sense to y'all so far, type in some nines and we'll keep it going. If it's making sense so far, type in some nines and we'll keep it going. And what I mean by animals, I mean animal product, period. If dairy come from animals, you shouldn't be eating it. If it comes from an animal, it should not go in your mouth. All right. If it come from an animal, it should not go in your mouth. Yes, you're eating things that is decomposing in your stomach. Staying inside of your stomach sac so long that it starts rotting away, killing you, becomes very acidic. And this is what breeds or birth all types of different parasites. If y'all need to see how parasites are born from within the body, just go back to my last video on here where I talks about how parasites is killing us all. And guess what it comes from? It comes from us taking on a carnivorous lifestyle. It comes from us taking on an omnivorous lifestyle. All right. And we're going to talk about the herbivores, too. Because are we herbivores? Are we? We gonna well, let's get down to it. Let's by the time we get off this live, we should know what we supposed to be eating. All right. Okay, we got nines. We got nines. Now let's go to the herbivores. Look at the herbivores and look at these teeth. Do your teeth look like an herbivore? Do your teeth look like a lamb teeth? Do your teeth look like a horse teeth? Do your teeth look like a cow teeth? Do you stand on all fours? Is your back elongated or are you an upright man? Or are you supposed to be pulling, picking, and plucking? Or are you supposed to be on all fours on, on clothing feet all day, eating grass and eating hay, eating grains and things like that? Showing you that grains is not your food Ooh, we i know we don't want to hear these things because look look at their teeth even their front teeth look like their back teeth inside when you start looking at herbivore teeth every teeth in their mouth is a molar because they have to grind all of their food see we chew our food now we do have a couple of molars in the back for grinding once the chewing is done but all the herbivore do is grind 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 now why do the herbivore have to grind he have to grind his food because he's dealing with something in his food that is very very tough to break down and that is called cellulose and this is what cellulose look like and what cellulose is it is a hard fiber made up of sugars and made up of polysaccharides it's a fiber it reminds me of the the uh the myelin sheaths of a nerve you know how you have a myelin sheath the myelin sheath cover up every nerve ending that way you can't penetrate the nerves and that's why when herpes set in is when the myelin sheaths have went away dementia and all these other different types of syphilis it's when the myelin sheaths have been wearing away now the parasites can come in and, and live amongst the nervous system because the myelin sheaths become weak this is what cellulose look like look at all of this different detail complex fiber that is deeply woven together your stomach cannot break this down your stomach the hydrocaloric acid inside of your stomach is not even hot enough to break this down now if the hydrocaloric acid is not even hot enough to break this down in your stomach and this is a herbal plant this is what you would call a vegetable then it damn show ain't, ain't hot enough to break down a complex bean or a complex grain it damn show ain't hot enough to break down on meat which is, is a polypeptide which is one of the strongest strongest amino acid complex amino acid structures in the world and that's what you call animals flesh your body can't even break this down so how is it going to break these things down and that's the reason why in order and, and you will see who the herbs are for the, see see fruits act as a herb to us fruits cleanse us fruit hydrate us you see that herbs is what cleanse and hydrates the the the, the herbivores or what you call the cows and the bulls the buffaloes and all of those but if we have if we have a disease that's too normal and that's too progressive 
you know, and, and we haven't attacked it quickly to get rid of it, then we have to switch to the herbs or the herbivores because that that is like a tranquilizer to us. It'll go in and all the fibers in it will cleanse and purge our body. It pushes against the cells of the body and then the cells pushes back against the herbs or the electrical magnetic frequency from the herbs and from that pushing and them pushing each other, what happens is a cleansing come from it and it starts to push all of the cells out. It starts to push all of the toxemia out of the cells. So that's what herbs do. But herbs are really not your diet. Herbs is just for cleansing you. What heals you is the actual fruits. Herbs don't heal you. Fruits is what rehabilitate. The body truly heals itself. What herbs do is purge the body because herbs are toxic to you. Whenever you take something that's toxic, it, your body has a purging effect. Your, your body is reacting from it. The, the same thing if you drink alcohol. As soon as you get drunk out of alcohol, the first thing you do is what? Throw up. That's why if you take my three bitters, the first thing you do is what? Throw up. The day you wake up from being drunk from that alcohol or you got food poisons, what you're doing? You're pooping, you're throwing up, and you're peeing. You're urinating and defecating everything. Everywhere. Isn't that the same thing that's happening when you take in the herbs? It's the same effect. We just been pushed, you know, the herbs does this, herbs does this, herbs does that. No, herb is plunges the body. That's what herbs do. And that's why when you go into the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and 29, it tell you that the fruits yielding seed shall be meat unto you and the herbs shall be for the healing of the nations. So the herbs is what's going to purge the body, but the fruits is what's going to heal you, going to rehabilitate the cells. So all refrugivores are herbivores. Let's just see. Let's just see. And I hope this stuff is making a, a, a whole lot of sense to y'all. And then we're going to open up the phone lines. And I want to hear y'all thoughts on this stuff, too. I mean, these things are facts. I'd improve this stuff time and time again, y'all. So, I mean, I'd improve this stuff over and over and time and time and time again. So let's just let's just look this up again. Let's pull it back up. You know what I'm saying? And look, let's take our time with it. Let's see. Now, when you get to the herbivores, notice your teeth do not look like them. Now, let's go over to the frugivores. Now, if y'all see, let me blow this up because I don't want none of y'all be like, nah, that don't look right. Now, what teeth does the human assimilate the most? The frugivore, which is the primate, which is the silverback gorilla. This big old donkey here, which is the herbivore. This, this uh, I don't know, look like a wildcat. This, this wildcat here, which is the omnivore. Or this tiger in the background, which is the carnivore. Which one does the human teeth closely assimilate? The, the carnivore, the omnivore, the herbivore, or the frugivore? Y'all show me. Y'all look at this. Y'all selves. Take a, take a time. Just sit back and look at this. And then you answer the question for me. And then we're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep it pushing. Do y'all see this? Which one? Look at the human. And then look at everybody else, the carnivore, the omnivore, the herbivore, and the frugivore. Which one do, do we look like the most? That's right, family. The frugivore. The frugivore. The frugivore. The frugivore. It makes all the sense in the world, family. Now, check this out. If this is not deep enough for y'all, let's keep going. Because I know a lot of y'all, y'all like to see to believe, Okay. I know a lot of y'all like to see to believe. Let's start breaking these things down here. Now, look at this. Do you look like this? Is your tongue long like that? For you can hurry up and pull. Look, look at that muscular tongue. That tongue is long like that. And them grids are on the tongue long like that. For once these canines or what you, whatever you want to call these things, dig deep within the bone and rip the, the flesh from the bone. That tongue, that muscle is so long and it got all these spongy things on the tongue for it can grab the food and hurry up and throw it down the throat. Because it cannot be in the, the esophagus for too long because it's very acidic. You see that? You don't look nothing like that. And, and do you have the type of heart or to, 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 to just go tackle that chicken that you love, which is unclean and a hybrid, by the way? Do you have the type of mentality to catch that chicken and just bite that chicken head off to catch that chicken? Don't cook it. Don't put no flour on it. Don't drain the blood and just bite the wing off. I know y'all love chicken drums and chicken wings and chicken legs and all of that stuff. Chicken claw. Do, will you just go into a chicken coop, take that chicken and eat that chicken alive? Because guess what? That's what a, con a, a carnivore would do. That's what an omnivore would do. You don't even have that type of mentality. 
That's the reason why you have to cook it. That's the reason why you have to put herbs on it. That's the reason why you have to put lemon pepper on it. That's the reason why you have to put pepper rica on it. Notice the things you're putting on it. You're putting all plants and season in these things because true in nature, you know that you're a frugivore and you take herbs when you heal. So you're you're subconsciously doing that to even make this meat even taste good because you know that if you just even if you cook it and don't put nothing on it, y'all call that white folk food. It's bland. It have no seasoning on it. You see that? So you can't even eat it cooked without the seasoning. You can't eat it unless it's seasoning, unless you got them herbs and them fruits on it, which shows you what you truly are in nature, shows you your geographical location, shows you your cosmic arrangement, your genetic disposition. It shows you. It shows you. Now, do you have claws like these or do you have fingernails? You see that? That is made for ripping into flesh. That is made for stopping a prey. That is made for ripping flesh straight from the bone. And notice it's four of them. Then they got to hide one that sits all the way up here. You see that? Guess what we got? We got fingers. This is what we got, y'all. We got fingers. This don't look like that. This don't look nothing like that. Guess what this for? This is for pulling. This is for plucking. This is for pilling, pilling oranges. See that? Pilling tangerines. This is for pull, pluck, and peel and eat. You see that? This is for picking up seeds. This Can, can this pick up a berry and eat it? Then look, this claw right here can't go to a tree and pick a berry and eat it. This claw right here can't go to a tree and pick an apple and eat it, showing you that them apples and them berries are for another species of people or another species, period, and it's not for this carnivore, it's not for this omnivore. So I wonder who's the fruit for, because it shows not for him. His teeth, it is gonna be, it's going to be very hard for him to chew that apple from the way his teeth is structured. His nails and his claws, it's going to be very hard for him to hold these things because he don't have fingers. He have a paw with claws. It's going to be very hard for him to eat these fruits. So I wonder what species the fruit was left for. Just my question. Just a question. Just a question, family. Just a question. Now, when you really start getting into these things, look at the body and the physiology of it. Notice how it sits low. You don't sit low. You walk upright. Notice the tail. The tail is to make it straight and to make it pick up its speed when it's running. See that? The fastest man in the world can't even get up to what? 35 miles an hour? That's the fast and that's the fastest man in the world. What's that? What's that? 35 miles an hour? This thing get up to 50 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour. And this is not, and I'm I'm talking about pro pro athletes. Superhumans, 35 miles an hour. This thing get up 50 miles an hour. Notice how his hind sits up very, very high from his from his neck because it have to crouch. Because that's how it that's how it's built. It's built as a bio, it's built as a biological hunter. You're not built as a biological hunter. Guess what? In order for you to assimilate this thing, you have to get knives. Guess what you use knives for? The knives represents their claws. You see that you have to get forks and all types of things. Guess what these utensils represent represents they long canine teeth. You see that? Just like if you jump, if you want to go deep sea diving, you got to put fans on. You got to put swimming feet on and all type. You got to put your body in all types of tanks and everything else. We're doing everything up outside of nature than what we supposed to be doing. And we wondering why we have to create all this technology because we're getting farther and further and further away from ourselves, further away from ourselves. Look at that. Look how it stands. Look how it's so low to the ground. Look at the way the head is shaped. That is made like a straight weapon, a hunter. You are not made like that. You are made to be gentle in spirit. You are made to be loving. You are made to be civilized. You ain't made to be like this. This is a killer. You not no killer. You are a, 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 a proliferator when it comes to life. You, you come to reproduce things. You come to give birth to new life. You come to civilize earth. You don't come to kill and destroy. Destroy? So when did we become hunter and gatherers and all of these killers and all of that? Because that is not us in our true nature form. We are not this and we're acting like this. And that's why we're dying. Do you know the life expectancy on this? Their lifespan. This, this thing is only going to live to see 18 to 20 years old. 
That's it. 18 to 20 years old. Why does it die so fast? Because all it eats is acids all its life. It don't eat nothing else, just acids. And it eats so much acid that it got to sleep from 18 to 21 hours a day. It's only 24 hours in a day. And you wonder why you're so sleepy all the time. Your adrenals are fatigued. You don't have any energy and you can't do nothing with your life because your mind is always focused on lustful things, focused on eating and focused on everything. That's all he think about. That's all this lion think about is humping, reproducing, and his next meal and sleeping. Notice your average Negro think the same way. Humping, eating, eating up all the, the children's snacks and stuff, and sleeping. And when he's woke, them two hours of the day, he playing a game all day. And you wonder why? Because he done took on the beastly, animalistic nature of this here animal. Because you eating like these animals eat. So you're taking on the animalistic characteristics of the animals. But y'all don't hear me, though. Y'all don't hear me, though. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, look at that. Don't this look like a weapon? Don't this look like a weapon? Look at how muscular this is. You ain't born with muscles. Like, look, look at this. Look at how it runs and it jolts. Look at what it uses its claws for. Why its ears are up like that for it can hear. The sense and every senses on this thing is so heightened because it have to hear every step. If you walking in that forest and you walking in that Amazon and you touch a leaf or, or you touch on that moist soil, it need to hear that because it need to know where it's going to crouch and where it's going to go with. You see that with you? You got to get binoculars. You got to put on something to, to camouflage yourself with a tree when you go dare hunting. You got to sit in a tree all day. You got to buy a gun, a knife, a claw, an axe. You got to do all. You got to buy all types of stuff to even get close to stuff like this because you are not a true hunter. If you was a true hunter, you should be able to strip naked and go inside of uh, uh, straight in the jungles of Africa and bring back a boar, bring back a, a wild beast, bring back a gazelle, bring back all of these other different animals that these things are eating. Bring back a hyena. You take your butt naked self out there in that jungle. You ain't coming back. Because you are not a hunter by nature. Your cosmic arrangement wasn't arranged for you like that. But we just we're meat eaters. We're this. We eat meat, fruits and vegetables. No, you don't. No, you don't. And notice all creation. They mono eat. They don't eat more than three things. And it's only about seven items that's on their lively menu. A lion only eat meat. It ain't mixing it with nothing. It ain't cooking it. It ain't putting herbs on it. It ain't putting oil on it. It only eat meat. And then when you get to the meat that it only eat, it's only about seven species of meat that they eat. They mono eat. Same thing when you get to an omnivore. Same thing when you get to a herbivore. If you look at cows and you look at horses, they ain't, they eat alfalfa and hay and a few other, only about seven species of cellulose and grass. But as soon as you get to the human, this Negro eat everything. He eat meat, he eat herbs, he eat fruits, he eat 20 different types of meat, he eat 20 different types of meat on the land, 20 different types of meat in the sea, he eat everything, and he's the sickest human being, the most deadliest human being, the most, I mean, the most ill and, and the most dumbest human being on planet earth and we don't see that it's because we are violating nature we are not doing what we was created to do and we're not eating what we was created to eat these are the facts y'all i mean look these are the facts these are the facts these are the facts look at this it's not you look at this stuff look at this stuff and then you start truly truly getting into their anatomy Look at their anatomy. Look at it. Totally. I mean, when I say totally, totally, totally different from ours. Your stomach don't look like that. Look at the pancreas on this thing. Look how big. Let me look. Look, this is how you know that we ain't supposed to be eating what they're eating. Look at the pancreas. This pancreas is huge on this animal, on this carnivore. Do you want to see how your pancreas look? Let me show you how your pancreas look. Let's take off the lungs. Look at this pancreas, y'all. Y'all see the right lobe of the pancreas? Look how big that stomach is. And look how long the duodenum is. Let me show you how your physiology is totally different from theirs. Totally different. This is your pancreas right here. This your pancreas. Look at your pancreas. Small pancreas. Look how long that pancreas is. Now, check this out. That duodenum is about 13 to 14 inches long. Look how short yours is. This is your duodenum, your duodenum. Look at that. This your duodenum. 
Yours is only eight to nine inches long. And you telling me that we are created and made to eat the same things? No, we not. Your body is not created for meat whatsoever. No time of the day, not in the winter, not in the summer, not in the fall, not just because it's a holiday, not just because it's a holy day. You were never created to eat no protein, polypeptides, complex amino acid structures that forms and accumulates uric acid inside the body that kills and take the blood and turn your blood into white blood corpuscles and shut down and stagnate your lymphatic system and tear up the adrenal glands and have you in adrenal fatigue and have you in fight or flight with stress and anxiety from the hormones and the transmitters that's coming from these meats. You was never in your life, never in creation. And never allowed to eat these things Whether you say it's in a book or not it, this is, it can't be Can't be right It can't be possible Because guess what Guess why thousands and thousands are coming to us And we mail out hundreds and hundreds of healing packages a day Because we have forgotten our food We have forgotten the three foods that I'm going to mention towards the end And these three foods is the only foods that can sustain you These three foods is the only foods that can regenerate your cells These three foods is the only foods that can cleanse and hydrate the body There is no other food There is not one Not one and if anybody's saying that there is family, they are lying to you. They're either stuck in egotism. They either are just flat out devils and charlots and liars. You see that? Or it's for monetary gain or they're just dead deeply stuck into their lower animalistic nature and they desire that flesh so much. Them could be the only reason somebody will push this stuff up on you and tell you that eating this stuff is good for your body, good for your health and it's OK to eat. No way. No way in heaven. No way in heaven. It's most definitely a way in hell that they teach, but no way in heaven they will teach you this stuff. No way. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Now, let's keep it going. When you get to meat eaters and you get to plant eaters, all right, showing you what the meat eaters is. Meat eaters are cats, foxes, dogs, wolves, lions, and tigers, all right? Look at their digestive system compared to plant eaters or what you would call fruit, frugivores or even some herbivores. But we're going to get into the herbivores, yo, because it's going to blow your mind. Now, check this out. Look how long our intestinal tract is to ours. Their intestinal tract is about, you know, 12. I didn't even see some. Look, I'm not a liar. I keep it real. I didn't see some get up to 16 feet. I didn't see some uh, uh, omnivores and, and carnivores intestines get up to 16 feet, but ours is 32 feet long. Yours is 32 feet long. And the reason why yours is 32 feet long is because it goes through a digestive tract called fermentation. It takes a while for the food to ferment for you can get all of the healing constituents and get all the simple what you would call monosaccharides or simple sugars up out of it. For you can get these carbon and oxygen and uh, hydrogen constituents for you can turn it into ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, adenosine monophosphate and adenosine diphosphate. And that's the way you get your vitality, your vitality or your energy from for you can do your everything. Everyday potential work you see that the cells need fuel and if you put the wrong fuel in the body the body will have a blowback from it so this shows you that we need foods that actually breaks down and ferment well guess what meat don't ferment guess what meat does it rots it putrefies Ooh can, let me say that again meat doesn't ferment Meat putrefies. Meat go through putrefaction. Meat rots. And the reason why these intestines are so short when it comes to the carnivores is because you do not want that meat sitting inside of 30 feet of intestines for that long because you will have all types of colon cancer. Penis can't get hard. Vagina dryness. All types of polycysts. All types of ovarian cancer. Ovarian cysts. All types of fibroids and all types of things going on inside of your body because that meat is sitting in those long intestines for that long of a time and the hydrochloric acid inside the stomach is not even hot enough to break these polypeptides or what you would call complex amino acid structures down Ooh we Ooh we you see that so so we can't be the ones on the left we can't be like the cat the foxes the dogs the wolves the lions and the tigers you see that that's the reason why you will see herbivores and frugivores when they eat their food they really must chew their food they have to super chew their food and then once it goes down it goes through uh, many different types of secretions of acids of pepsinogen of hydrochloric acid then it goes through an absorption rate 
But when once we separate the herbivores from the frugivores, it's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind, y'all. If y'all get what I'm saying so far, make sure y'all type in some nines. Make sure y'all like this video. Make sure y'all share this video. I am hoping I'm proving these things. I'm trying my hardest to quit uh, yelling at y'all. A lot of y'all said that uh, it sounded like that I was like putting y'all in timeout and stuff like that. I just be passionate and I be angry with y'all because of stuff like this. Because I've been teaching this stuff for so long and it's like y'all are not getting it, you know. And it's like why are my people not getting it? And I, I realize why. Is because I was I was in that same state of mind you know uh, uh over ten years ago so you know I can't blame y'all I can't really be mad at y'all because I was in the same mental state at one point but I know if I can wake up and if I can change my life change my diet change my mindset realize that I am the true God within and, it, and you can do the same thing you can realize the God you are if I can awaken my chakras if I can truly truly tune in on who I am and, and be one with the all and all with the one and breathe in that cosmic energy and project and manifest whatever I want in this holographic uh, reality we call the matrix you can do the same thing but I'm gonna tell y'all it's gonna start with your diet the, you can't do none of these things unless you change your diet unless it's just pure will and and, and it was already set up for you like that or you know uh, the coin just toss on it because sometimes the universe it swings the way it does want to swing you see what I'm saying? That's why you got rich people that like steaks and lobsters and stuff like that. But but for for the most point, if you are if you over 30 and you ain't nowhere yet, I'm telling you, you have to change your perception. And the best way to change your perception is starting with your diet, because food is information. You know, you got to be careful about the information you put in your body because the food that's information that you put in your body is what becomes your RNA or your mRNA, which is your messenger RNA ribose nucleic acid. Or your, and, and this potentially makes up your DNA deoxyribonucleic acid, which makes up the blueprint and the informational pathway to your body that makes up your physiology, your structure and that outputs your thought. So literally you are what you eat and you think what you eat and that's why you have women running around acting like chicken heads or i mean it's it's getting so bad that they're wearing the horse hair and they're taking pictures in horse stands like or they're wearing pigtails and ponytails if if you just start seeing what's going on and all the animalistic nature they calling themselves bitches which is a female dog you know or they call men's dogs like if you just look at the animal you calling snitches rats you call the police pigs you see that i mean i got a that's a bad bitch excuse my language or you call your kitty cat a pussy cat i mean if if you if you look at at how we associate ourselves with our animalistic nature or how we associate the characteristics of us with animals you call a backstab or a snake we are very 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 animalistic and that's because we're eating animals and i don't see how we are not making this connection <laughs> i mean i just i just don't see it you know I used to be bloodthirsty. I was gang banging. I was looking for whoever. You wouldn't on my side. It was F you. You know what I'm saying? Now it hurts me to see a deer get hit. It hurts me to see a rabbit die. Like I, I hurt. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't happen until I changed the way I respected animals and I respected my food and what I eat. You know what I'm saying? I respected the information. Once I started respecting my, my, my living, not my diet, my living, that's when I started having compassion for others. And I started having compassion for others beyond humanity, beyond human species. I started having compassion for bugs, for insects, for turtles and, and, and stuff. I mean, just for everyday life. I started having compassion for it and it hurted me to see them hurt. And that's but you can't you can't you can't have that when you're eating them, when you killing and eating them, cooking the blood out of them, putting seasoning on them and and having a whole feast over them, having a, a, a dead. You're, you're literally having a, f a funeral, a morgue on your table every single day of your life. You're surrounded by death. Death is in your freezer. Death is in your mouth, in your gut, in your intestines. Death is on your fingertips. Death is in your pots, your pan, your pans. Death is just everywhere. And, and that's the reason why you can't get to higher levels of consciousness because you are surrounded by corpse all day that you call food. That's the reason why. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but this is the truth. This is the truth, family, and I just I hope y'all are taking the information and going to do the research instead of, you know, y'all keep just bashing, bashing, bashing. No, I love you. I love you too much to have you keep on this path of killing yourself. So if I don't say nothing, who will? That's all that is. That's all that is. This is out of love. This is out of love. That's all that is. It's out of love. Now, I want to show some graphic pictures. Uh, so if you got children here that don't like to see Death and animals eating other animals. Uh, you know, I, I advise y'all to tell them to tame their head. 
turn their heads. Now, I want to show y'all this because these are this is what you're doing. To, I mean, this is what you're involuntary doing to the meat when you eat it. Do you eat your, your meat like this? You see this lion standing over this and I, he ate it while I was living. Do you eat your meat like this? Notice you don't see no stove in the background. Notice you don't see pots and pans and oil, grapeseed oil and vegetable oil, canola oil. Notice you don't see any seasonings. Guess what you see? You see a predator and a prey. You see that? And you see that the, 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 the prey lost and it got eaten alive. All the organs got ate because they love the organs. When you, you not, you know, and then we got people, I love me some liver, some chopped liver. And you don't even know the origins of these things. And a lot of this stuff is high spiritual witchcraft and you don't know it. A lot of this is sacrificing to Baal, PR and Balaam and all types of Azeroths and a lot of different uh, uh, pantheons when you get into African spirituality. A lot of that, a lot of this is sprinkling of the blood. A lot of this is dark, high witchcraft, warfare, witchcraft. And it's called sacrifices and you eat what you sacrifice. And a lot of y'all don't know that. And you wonder why you're under this spell and why you can't break through the matrix and why you can't get somewhere in life because you're constantly killing things all day. And, and even if you're not going out and hunting them yourself, you are you are accessory to the crime. You are accessory to the crime. You are. So when nature when nature judges and, and, and when nature start putting everything in its proper arrangement, guess what? You're going to be caught. You're going to be looked at as a violator and you're going to have to pay for the things that you have done. You have to pay for making your stomach a, a funeral home. You got to pay for using your intestines as, as a pine box to dead animal corpse. Literally. And, and notice the cycle, this death cycle we in or what we call the death culture. You eat the animals, which is a violation of nature. Then by you eating them, you know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. This stuff start decomposing and rotting away inside of your intestines from these all types of demons or what we're going to call parasitics or birthed and born from them. Because in order to break down this rotten meat and put, put it in a state of putrefaction, you need an enzymic reaction. And these enzymic reactions can only be parasites due to to the microbiome it changes the whole role of the microbiota inside the gut they start turning into evil gnarly ancestors to start trying to get this stuff outside the body and then the body literally starts to attack itself because because it has to become very acidic to get these things out the organs swell it starts taking water from all different parts of the uh, uh, of extremities of your body and, and you start being dehydrated and literally the acids that's produced from you killing and eating that animal starts to eat you alive and then kill you give you cancer give you give you a cholesterol plaque give you heart attack give you high blood pressure give you diabetes give you stroke give you all types of madness all because you wanted to violate nature and put these things in your body when your mouth was not made to be a graveyard your mouth was made to be a garden you're planting when you're eating you're planting See that you don't eat to bury anything you're eating when you're eating, you're planting, you're not eating. A, you're not eating to bury a corpse in your stomach. You're eating the plant. And then when you poop, you're pooping out that same defecation, which you just ate. And then that goes back into the ecosystem and it regrows trees, plants and everything else. It's called the cycle of life. But y'all are on the cycle of death. You need to get off the cycle of death and you need to join the cycle of life where you're eating living things. And these living things break down to more living things. And then you defecate or you urinate the these living things out and it keeps this cycle of life going you see that we're in the wrong cycle we're in the wrong cyclic cycle y'all we're in the wrong circle of life y'all we supposed to be in a circle of life not the circle of death if you looking on my screen that's called the circle of death right there you see that now let's get into the herbivores because I want to show y'all something. Now, when you get into these herbivores, this is how you know that we're not herbivores. I'm not saying you're not supposed to be eating herbs, but notice the herbs and vegetables. When you don't break them up and break out the cellulose in them, when we're going to get into the cellulose, I'm going to break this down for y'all. I will not leave y'all hanging. Notice that it slows down the healing. When we have people on our amino acid therapeutic package, I mean, I can't call it that no more, our geogenetic therapeutic package, and we're truly, truly healing our bodies, or whether it's HIV, AIDS, sickle cell anemia, leukemia, uh, cancer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the moment that they start cleansing too fast from the fruits, because the fruits, they start doing their job to the body, which is rehabilitating the body. But in order for the spiritual bio spiritual body to heal itself, it have to get rid of what's weak and it have to get rid of what's causing it to be stiff and what's causing it to die in the first place. So anything, if you got weak fingernails, they're going to pop off. 
thinking it was going to pop off, but new ones will grow back. If you got weak hair and damage to the myelin sheaths or you got fungus growing on your scalp, like alopecia is nothing but an inner scalp. It's fungus that grows on the nervous system inside of the scalp. That's what alopecia is. Once that fungus really moves, look, guess what? All the hair coming with it. So you might lose your hair. You might lose fingernails. I mean, all types of stuff. I mean, we detox the bullets out of somebody. He got shot in his lower extremities. We detox him. The bullets came out. We literally detox the bullets out of that brother, showing you that what's ever foreign and not supposed to be in the body when you're eating what you're supposed to be eating. The first process is going to go through is a process of elimination, dead weight. It got to get rid of dead weight. And that's what rebirthing and renewing is, is getting rid of the old things that was holding the body down. And that's what that cosmic energy is about. And that's why we love fruits, because fruits is very, very high when it comes to energetics, when it comes to that cosmic energy. Do y'all realize that? Fruits have 12 fruits hold the, the capability and the capacity of 12 angstroms of energy, your fruit vegetables only hold nine. Hold on. Let me say this again. And I'm going I'm to show you all this fruits, your fruits, your organic fruits with seeds have over 12. It can hold 12 at any given time. 12 angstroms of energy. Do y'all know how energetic fruit is? But your vegetables only nine. And that's at its highest. I'm just because I don't want y'all to think that I'm just down in vegetables. We have tested some and seen some that's at nine. So I'm going to say nine. But mostly they're around five, around five and six. Unless you break through that cellulose and we're going to talk about that. Now, when you get to meat, do y'all realize if the meat, unless that meat is alive with the blood in it, like the lions and like the carnivores and the omnivores eat it, you will not get no instruments of, of, of power from it whatsoever. And half of y'all, y'all know we Negroes, we like our meat well done. So you cooking out all the blood and that's where all the goodies and all the nutritive factors is at. That The nutrients in the, is in the blood. Life is in the blood. Oxygen and CO2 is in the blood. The cosmic energy, the prama, all these things are in the blood, the Holy Ghost, the Ruach Kakodash, whatever y'all want to call it, it's in the blood. When you cook the blood, then what are you even eating the meat for? Because now you're cooking dead blood corpuscles and you're eating dead pl blood corpuscles, which turns into this sticky, rotten acid called uric acid, and then this crystallized uric acid, and then it's stuck to polypeptides, which is complex protein amino acids. Man, that's like that's like chewing on a, uh, a wrecking ball you might as well you might as well eat marbles for the rest of your life because it ain't gonna break down and it's gonna mess up everything that it touch you see that show you that that fruit is the higher energetic the most highly energetic food that you can ever eat and that's why fruit grows the way it does you know notice that the herbs and, and stuff like that grows from from the ground but when you look at a fruit a fruit hangs from a tree it is high in the sky and the reason why it's so high in the sky is because it is it's closer to the sun and the sun can feed it that intellectual property by the way of photosynthesis and taking uh, 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 carbohydrates or what you want to call carbon from the air and taking water from the soil and mixing carbon and water together and turning it into co2 and, and that's what that oxygen and, and that carbon and that water does and the co2 can be fueled to fire off the cells and then it goes through its uh, chlorophyll chlorophyll or chloroplats and then you eat the chlorophyll and the chlorophyll acts as a melanin agent to your body which is keeps you aligned and keeps you in tune to the all into nature i mean it's it's a very sensual and sexual thing when you eat eating is supposed to be like sexual and there's nothing sexual about eating something dead that's that's cooked and that have been murdered and have been slaughtered there ain't nothing sensual about that that's that's partaking in a daily ritual but when you can go and you can you can pull and pluck out apple or orange or a watermelon from the vine and a grape from the vineyard and you can eat that and just the taste of it all the different taste buds and just the energy and what it does to your body that is that is a food orgasmic moment you know what i'm saying you're producing something you're not producing anything but death when you eat meat you, but you're producing life when when, you, when you're eating things that you're supposed to eat which is your fruits your berries and your melons now, when you get to these 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 herbivores, notice this this specific uh, herbivore, not all of them, not not all of them have four, but most of them have two stomachs. You only have one. Notice you only have one stomach. This is your stomach. You only have one of these things. You don't you don't get two or four. 
And the reason why they get two and four is because they have to break through that cellulose because that cellulose is very, very thick. And that's the reason why when we get herbs, we have to put them in alcohol to sugar, alcohol to make tinctures. We have to put them in grinders to break through that cellulose to make herbal capsules. We have to tell you to boil the hell out of the heaven out of the roots and stuff like that for you can get the healing constituents and the modalities out of it. You have to grind them and pulp them and things like that, because I mean, with the cellulose, the cellulose is so hard. And inside the cellulose It have things Because plants The plants Only thing that loves to be eaten By human beings Is fruits Plants even have poisons In them called lectins Lectins L-E-C-T-I-N Look it up Lectins And these lectins Are gnarly chemicals and, 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 and gnarly parasites That protects the cellulose Of the plant Because you ain't supposed To be eating them <laughs> Now guess what This is not in This is not in your fruits you see that? So so even when you get to the herbs and the grains, y'all, this, and this is the amazing part, right? When you get to herbs and when you get to grains and, and when you get to beans that's not uh, uh, that's not sprouted, they come with a chemical inside of them that tears up your stomach and that causes parasites. It's called lectins. Look it up. I mean, it, it will jack you up, especially if you're not pre prepping the food right. Then when you get to meat, meat is all types of uric acid that your body can't break down. And it's literally a carcinogenic when it comes to the body. So the flesh and the meat gives you cancer and kills you. The 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 beans that is not sprouted is full of phytic acid that burns you and shut down your kidneys. The grains, which is carbonic acid that burns your body and, and it brings zinc out of it. And plus, it got a lot of gluten. In it so it sticks the cells together which causes a heavy mucus response and it causes you to retain water that's why people that's on grains a lot like kamut and spelt get fat you see what i'm saying i mean everything that you eat that's outside of your cosmic arrangement have a bad byproduct of blowback from it but then when you start eating the fruits <laughs> Only thing that happened from eating the fruits is healing, blood flowing, blood being rebirthed, bones are growing stronger, you losing weight, and things are starting to cleanse and reorganize themselves for the rebirthing process. But when you eat anything else outside of your cosmic arrangement, there is a there is a blowback from it. Can y'all still hear me? If y'all can still hear me, let me know. If y'all can still hear me, let me know. My camera just went out. My camera just went out. Let me see. Let me see what's going on. If y'all can still hear me, let me know, y'all. All right. Give me two seconds, y'all. Give me two seconds. Let me blow this up. Let me see what's wrong with the camera. Give me two seconds, family. Bear with your brother. All right, let's say I'm back. All right, I'm back in the building. I'm back in the building. All right, now check this out. Let's just keep it going. So I, for a minute, I just want to talk about cellulose, show y'all how tough cellulose is, and this is in all of your vegetables. So when you start looking at cellulose, let me see where that picture is at. This is how cellulose actually looks, y'all. Hold on, family. So this is actually how cellulose, hold on, wrong picture. Why you doing me like that? Now my computer tripping. Hold on, family. Yeah, family. Now even my computer tripping. Ain't this crazy? All right, here we go. We good. We good, family. All right, let's get back to it. I just ain't going to pull from that one. I ain't going to pull from that one at all. All right, let's get back to it. So when you look at this cow, I want y'all to look at the physiology of this herbivore. Notice how it is actually made. It is made perfectly to do what it's doing right now. Notice how the neck is elongated. Notice how it easily just bend down to eat the grass. Notice how the esophagus, how long it is. Look at the body. Look at the calves or what you're going to call the hoofs on this animal. It is literally made to stand up all day long and to stretch out its elongated neck to bend over to eat grass. 
grass. Can you imagine yourself on on all fours all day doing this thing? Can you imagine yourself on all fours all day doing this thing? What is going on with this thing? Y'all, I don't know what's going on with my program, but it's starting to do that little spinning thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, log out. We're going to call this part one. We're going to call this part one and I'm going to try to restart this. All right. If that don't work, I'm going to make sure I come uh I come back in tomorrow because I don't know what's going on. Because like now I can't even move my thing. So uh, with that being said, y'all, I w- we was going to go through everything. I'll make sure I start back here if I can't come back on tonight. And then we're going to come back on tomorrow because I don't want y'all to miss this, y'all. I don't want y'all to miss this. Uh, I was going to open up the phone lines for phone calls and stuff like that. But uh, I think I'm going to just shut it down right now. All right. So with that being said, I love y'all indeed in truth. Uh, if y'all can, just for me. Put some encouraging words inside of the comment board. Let me know that you love yourself and you love yourselves. And we'll do a part two. Just in case this don't work. I know everybody's saying no. And <laughs> I understand, y'all. I understand. I understand. But we, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram at Yaki Awaken. If y'all not, follow me on Facebook at Yaki Hickman. If y'all not already, follow me on there. And, of course, follow me and subscribe to me on YouTube, Yaki Awaken. All right. I love y'all and I love myself. I love myself. Uh, y'all make sure y'all eating better. We're going to get to the bottom of this either tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to try to see what's going on. And we're going to get to the bottom of this stuff, y'all. And I'm going to show y'all the three foods. And I, I y'all, if, if anybody been following me, y'all know what the three foods is. But, you know, <laughs> All right, and I hope I proved, I hope I, I came today with a humble heart, with a humble mind, not yelling and cussing and just really, really dialoguing with the people. For if I can show y'all the true way to heal the mind, the body, the spirit, and the soul. And I hope y'all actually sit down and, and, and use y'all simplistic mindset when it comes to this and look at all the information and arrive to the same point that I arrived to many, many years ago. That we've been eating the wrong foods, family. All right, peace, peace, family, peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth, peace to you goddesses, and peace to the gods, y'all. Uh, I'll catch y'all later. Shalom, 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 alaikum.